You are listening to A Difference for One podcast, episode number 21. I'm Michelle. I'm Nicole. I'm Sharice. And I'm Cami. We are the English Sisters. We come together to share life-changing methods of improvement through a variety of topics. We hope that above all, these discussions will help you feel that Jesus Christ is making a difference for you, the one. And we also hope that our podcast will inspire you to find simple ways that you can make a difference for one. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we want to delve deeper into the thought cycle. And if you're not sure what that is or you can't remember all the details about it, you can refer back to episode two and listen to that one. We're specifically going to focus on the concept of effort. Remember that the thought cycle is thought, emotion, effort, outcome. So TO is the way you remember it. So effort refers to what you're putting into your relationships, goals, things like that. And your efforts or the lack thereof are directly affected by the emotions you feel about thoughts you're having or about any situation you're in. Because the thought cycle is just that, a cycle, when you improve any one part of the cycle, it'll help you improve the entire thing. So we're going to discuss right now how we can improve our efforts. We'll be back after this quick break with a message from our sponsors. Right now, this is a really crazy time in the world with everything happening and in the United States as well. But the important thing about effort is that we're doing our best. God knows our struggles and he just wants to see that we're trying and that we're doing at least something. What well, might be a small thing for some people, like getting out of the bed in the morning, is a big deal for other people. But really, any progress is still progress, no matter how big or small. And really, only you and God know the entire scope of your situation, of what you're going through and what you can handle. So you need to be the one to decide how much effort you can manage to put into your current situation. In this episode and the next one, we want to give people a little bit of hope with things they're struggling with right now. People everywhere are depressed, anxious, unmotivated, and really scared. And I would venture to say that most people want to help others where they can. I don't know about you guys, but I find it really hard when most of us are confined to our homes. And it's not realistic to try to help everywhere, but each of us has specific gifts and missions to help further the work that God wants us to do in this life. And so it's critical that we have the companionship of the Holy Spirit to seek out personal revelation and figure out where God wants us to put our efforts right now. Effort is an action word. The definition of effort is a vigorous or determined attempt or the result of an attempt or physical or mental exertion. I love this definition because I'm a person that is task-driven and determined to accomplish things. So I like to check things off my list. And the word effort focuses on the need to be actively doing something, to be engaged in the work you feel called to do. This can be many things, and you can desire to develop and focus on a lot of different things, just not all at once. Although, in your thought cycle, you might have to analyze the lack of effort or motivation behind not doing something you have determined is important. Could this be because you don't like your reasons for doing it or because you dread the work required to do it? These questions are important because they lead you to a very important question. What is the real reason behind the effort that you put into the things that you want to do or the lack of effort that you put into the things that you don't want to do? And do you like that reason? This reminds me of one of my favorite podcast episodes by Brooke Castillo called The Hard Why. She teaches that it's important to analyze our reasons for doing what we do or what we want to do by asking ourselves why. Why do I want to do this? And she advises to not stop asking yourself until you've answered three times and then you will have discovered your hard why, your deep reason for wanting to do something. No matter what the desired goal is, Having a hard why will help you find inner motivation. It gets you to find the deepest reason why you are wanting to do whatever it is, asking why three times until you get to the core reason. For instance, I am writing a book. Sometimes it's really hard to get motivated to write, so I will sit down and ask, okay, why am I writing my book? Because I feel like I need to share my husband's cancer experience with others. Okay, why do I want to share it with others? because I think that others will relate to my experience as a caregiver and how I was able to function with my family through it all. All right, well, why will others be able to relate? Because 
I hope that my authenticity will validate them as they read my story and figure out how to process their own caregiving experiences. Ultimately, I feel called or obligated to do it. That is my motivation. Having done the work to establish my why for writing my book, I use the core desire or that hard why as my motivation to keep going and stay motivated, especially through times when I have writer's block or when I'm trying to figure out how to structure the information in my book or whatever tries to stop me. The hard why for me may not be someone else's hard why, nor will it be the same hard why for everything I do. And that's totally the way that it's supposed to be. Just make sure that you like your reasons for doing things so that it is motivating for you to keep going. And I think the most important method is to listen to the spirit and then listen to yourself. Find your deepest desires within yourself. So why is it so crucial that we understand our hard why? What's so crucial about the hard why? Well, each of us is given our own gifts and interests and strengths and weaknesses. And what we want out of life is directly related to those things. So something that is important to focus on for me may not be a passion for you. Something that I struggle with and have a desire to overcome may not be a weakness of yours. I think that we probably don't give ourselves enough credit for our deepest desires. I think that if you really look deep into yourself, you probably know more about what you feel and what you want than you think you do. And you are the person who knows your own weaknesses and struggles the best. So together with the Lord, we can know what's best for ourselves when it comes to overcoming weaknesses and understanding where we want to put our efforts. Putting a step forward in a direction that you feel works with what you want and what you feel the Lord wants of you will help you to feel like you're progressing. Yeah, we're always progressing, even into the next life. We're progressing because we continue to learn all the time. And learning is integral to progression. When I look at my life and the efforts I have put into things, it has been a series of habits that I've had a desire to create. But that desire wasn't laid all out before me at once, all of those desires combined. I took one step into the darkness and then the next step was lit before me. David Bednar teaches us that this is how the spirit works. He teaches us what we need to know right then to take the next step. When we take it, the next step lights up before us. At different times in my life, I have noticed that I wanted to be better at something, whether it was a cleaning routine or journaling, scripture study, one-on-one time with my kids, etc. As I've had that desire, I would pray about it and then study it out in my mind. And then I would ask others that I look up to in that area what works for them. Then I would watch videos, read books or articles and see what else I can learn. As I combine all of that stuff, I can adapt a plan that works for me. And it's not about copying anyone else, but using them as resource material and deciding for myself what to keep and what to throw out, what works for me and what doesn't. And as I've mastered one skill, I feel directed to work on another area and it builds until I see a steady progression upwards towards the kind of person that I want to be. Of course, that's not without some steps backwards because we all make mistakes. We all fall off the bandwagon. We all lose some of the habits we've created. But as long as we keep working at it and we keep taking steps forward, that's what's important. Yeah, and I have found that it's really important for me to focus on the solutions rather than wallowing in how things aren't working for me or being hard on myself when I don't have a productive day or if I can't see the progress that I'm making in something that I'm working towards. But we all have days like that. And I think that as we pick ourselves back up and try again the next day, we'll see how far those little daily steps are taking us. People will make mistakes and see delays in their progression. And then not only is that happening, but then they'll beat themselves up for that delay in their progression. So it creates a compound effect where they're feeling double negative emotion rather than just realizing, okay, I had this day where I I wasn't on track how I wanted to be, but tomorrow I can start again and I'm not going to beat myself up about what I didn't do. Yeah. So we can spend a lot of time focusing on problems, but when we focus on the solutions, we're going to have much more success and feel encouraged to keep going. Our brains love to solve problems and answer questions for us. 
So make sure that the questions you're asking yourself are the ones you want your mind to figure out for you. For instance, if you ask yourself, why am I always late? And tell your kids, hurry, we're going to be late. Come on, let's go. The brain will work to prove you right by subconsciously doing things that take up your time or make you late to prove yourself right. So instead, you could say, let's be quick so we get there a few minutes early. And how can I change my routine and stay focused so I can be a little early today? So this puts the focus on the positive rather than the negative, and our brains naturally want to figure that out and work through those solutions for us and prove ourselves right. The most important thing is that we don't get stuck in feeling discouraged or overwhelmed. We all have a lot of things we want to improve and projects or strengths we want to use to bless others, but we can't do all of that at once. The Holy Ghost helps us know what to focus on right now. We ask God what he wants us to focus on right now, listen for his answer, and then act upon that answer. Joy D. Jones said, Women wear many hats, but it is impossible and unnecessary to wear them all at once. The Spirit helps us determine which work to focus on today. The Lord's loving influence through the Holy Ghost helps us know his priority for our progression. Heeding personal revelation leads to personal progression. We listen and act. The Lord said, Ask the Father in my name in faith, believing that you shall receive, and you shall have the Holy Ghost, which manifesteth all things which are expedient. Our continuing role is to receive continuing revelation. As we attain a greater degree of proficiency at doing so, we can receive more power in our individual roles to minister and accomplish the work of salvation and exaltation to truly lay aside the things of this world and seek for the things of a better. We can then more effectively inspire our rising generation to do the same, end quote. So a big part of effort, whether it's positive or negative, is the habits that we create in our life. Have you noticed the negative ones come without any work or much thought, but positive ones usually come after a lot of hard work and discipline? Thomas Edison said, I never did anything worth doing by accident nor did any of my inventions come by accident. They came by work. I love that. And Theodore Roosevelt said, far and away, the best prize that life offers is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. I've never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I've envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. I love that. Yeah, I really love that. That really hammers the point home that we need to work hard. One way that we can work hard is by improving our habits. So first, we want to determine what habits we want to create. And you can do this by looking at your day and finding pain points. So maybe dinner time is a struggle for you. So what could you do to make dinner move more smoothly or make it so that you aren't turning to fast food as often to quickly solve this problem? That's just one example. Pain points are different for everyone. Um, maybe it's laundry piling up or not getting out the door in time in the morning. So you can look at those weaknesses and see if there's one thing you can do to make it go more smoothly. Like, for example, I always make sure that before we go grocery shopping, I have picked out the meals that I want and written out all the ingredients for grocery shopping. And I know these are the three meals we're going to make this week. And then it's not stressful when it comes to dinner time. Um, another thing that's a pain point for me is when I get home from work, the first thing I want to do is eat and relax. I found that if I take my food and sit on the couch and start watching videos, then the rest of my day is basically shot. But if I eat at the table and don't allow myself to watch videos or do anything else while I'm eating, then I can move on to something productive when I'm done. So I think that this is a great idea to actually look at your entire week and uh, decide where you can improve those things. Your habits can be a result of a certain outcome that you want. So like Sharice, who's writing her book, she may want to schedule nap time for her kids as a time to work on her book every day. So as she makes that a priority and sticks to her own commitment to herself, she'll find that it's easier and easier to do. I also think it's important to remember that sometimes when you're having struggles, it is what Cammie was saying, that we need to improve our habits and pinpoint our pain points. <laughs> but other times it's that we need to analyze our thoughts, our emotions, our efforts, and determine ways that we need to think differently. So sometimes it's 
that you need to do things differently by creating better habits, then sometimes it's just that you need to think differently. So you have to decide what's going to be best for you in each situation. Thanks, Nicole. I really like that. So um, another thing to think about is that the point of a positive habit is to create it so it seems second nature and it's just something that you do without thinking. So have you ever bought a new home close to your old one and accidentally started driving to the old one without thinking about it out of habit? I have done that. My <laughs> new home and my old home are like one exit off the highway from each other. And I accidentally took the wrong exit and started heading to my old house when I first moved to my new house, just not thinking. And then when I realized what was happening, I had to course correct because my brain had created a habit and it made it so that I didn't have to think so hard to do something mundane, a mundane task of getting home at the end of the day. And it could focus on other things that I was thinking about. So our brains only have so much capacity to focus on new tasks. They're creating new neural pathways and that takes effort and focus. But as you create a habit in one area, it frees up space in your brain to focus on another one. So my new year's resolution this year was to create one new habit a month, something very small that would improve my life in some way. And in years past, I would write down a ton of things I wanted to work on and not accomplish any of them because my brain couldn't focus on all of them at once. And I hadn't created a habit or scheduled it into my life to make it solidified. So I noticed it works so much better to focus on one at a time. And I learned that it takes 28 to 30 days of doing something consistently to make a habit out of it. But whether it's forming a habit or scheduling what you feel is important in your day or week, it's important to keep commitments to yourself just as you would someone else or even more so. You need to know that you can trust yourself. The more you keep your own commitments, the more you will trust yourself to keep improving. Yeah, habits take a lot of conscious effort in the beginning, but the idea is to get to the point where it is effortless to where you're doing it without thinking much about what you're having to do. You know that it's a good habit because it makes you happy to know that you're doing it and that you were able to get past that hard part where it was so hard to do it. One thing to be cautious about when deciding what to focus on or what improvements we want to make is to only compare ourselves to ourselves. And this is something I personally am still trying really hard to work on. We need to ask ourselves, how can I make myself a better person rather than asking how we can become as good as or better than others. We can also ask ourselves, what things do I want to change? It's important to remember that someone else is going to have different goals and focuses than you do. What works for other people may not work for you. And it's said that comparison is the thief of joy for a reason. It's okay and normal to look to others for advice and to learn from their mistakes. But the danger lies in giving up or feeling discouraged if others have different outcomes than you do. I want to emphasize that other people's successes do not equal your failure. A better approach would be to look at what efforts you're putting in and see if you need to try a different way that works better for you. I think that this goes really well with trying to understand our hard why, because if I understand the biggest and deepest reason that I want to do something, then I won't have any reason to look outside of myself. I'm working on that thing because that's what I know I want to do and I have a really good reason for wanting it. And even if no one else thinks that it's a good reason, it's a good enough reason for me. Thanks, Cammie. Okay, so why don't we each go around and say one habit or focus that we have worked on or mastered lately? So, Nicole, do you want to give us the first example? Yeah. This is definitely something I'm focusing on and have not mastered yet, but I'm working lately on listening to others with love instead of listening to respond. This has been really important for me lately, especially with my husband, because as I listen with love, I'm able to put myself in his shoes more easily and understand where he's coming from. And as I do this with others, especially on social media, then I'm able to open myself up to other viewpoints and keep myself from being so closed-minded. 
Okay, Cammy, why don't you go next? Uh, something that I'm working on right now is I am training for a 10K, and I actually created a vision board for myself recently because I felt like I didn't really have many goals I was focusing on. And so I look at it every morning because it's right across from my bed. And I saw that I had a 10K on there and I thought, why don't I just do it? And so I sat down at my computer and it was helpful just to, like Michelle was talking about, okay, this is just the next step. I'm not actually putting on my shoes and running outside. I'm just making a schedule and then we'll think about it. So I made a schedule of day by day and I looked at when the next race was coming up and then I printed it out and cut it and put it under my vision board. And when the first day came, I just took the next step of putting on my shoes and I told myself I would run as much as I could and I ended up being able to run the amount that I had on my paper and it helped me feel like I could do more. And so the next day when it was time to run, I felt more empowered because I had already proved to myself that I could do hard things. And so each morning when I don't feel like I want to get up, it has really pushed me to have that calendar because I don't want to let a day go by that I haven't crossed off. And I know there's only a certain amount of time I've allotted for myself that I can get it done. So I have to do it during that time. And that has kind of forced me to create this habit. And it's definitely not a habit yet. But as I'm putting more effort towards it, I think that it'll become easier uh, for me to get up at this certain time and know that this is a scheduled part of my day. And I won't have to feel like it's so much work. Okay, Sharice, so what about you? So earlier I mentioned hard work and the importance of it and those two quotes by Thomas Edison and Teddy Roosevelt. An area that I've been putting effort into is scheduling my housework and keeping up with it with the help of my family members because there's no way that I could ever keep my house clean by myself. So for example, I try to do laundry on Mondays and deep cleaning on Saturdays and organize other cleaning duties throughout the week. I feel it's important to involve my family in the housework. I'm really grateful that my husband agrees. <laughs> um, he's such a big help around the house. And he thinks that if he helps me inside of the house, then I would be willing to help him on the outside of the house, which has become true this year. I am the only one who is allowed to mow the lawn and it is my decision. It's probably more fun for you guys that way too, right? Because you're helping each other. Yeah, definitely. Even this morning, my daughter was putting clean dishes from the dishwasher away, and I was so pleased that she did it without having to be asked. Oh, it just melted my heart. But my hope and my focus is to teach my children that we all love hard work and that it's worth doing. Michelle, I guess that leaves you. So something that I have created as a habit is to get fully dressed with my shoes on to start my day. I noticed that as I stay in my pajamas and lounge about, I wasn't as productive. And there's something about putting those shoes on that really makes a difference. It's hard to explain without trying it out, but I don't like to step on things or get my feet sticky or my socks wet. And that would happen a lot. And then I'd get really annoyed. But with my shoes on, I feel like I'm going to accomplish a lot in that day. And then I start to take on the tasks of that day in a more asserted effort. Are we talking high heels or tennis shoes? <laughs> tennis shoes in the winter. And, and high heels in the summer. <laughs> and some sort of sandal in the summer, but something Just on kidding. my feet. And then recently I added to that to put on makeup and make myself look the way that I want to represent myself every day. And as I do that, I notice that even if I'm not going anywhere, which honestly, where are we going these days? I just feel better about myself. I feel ready to take on the day. And there are a lot of times where I'll get on Zoom meetings or uh, someone will stop by my house or I have to run to the store or something where I'm kind of happy that I went ahead and put on makeup that day. But it has more to do with the way I'm feeling than whether other people can see me or not. Because I just feel more accomplished when I have taken that time to do that. And so it seems like such a small thing, but it's made a huge difference in my life. Okay. To close this up, I wanted to remind you that the thought cycle is your thoughts lead to your emotions, which lead to your efforts, which create your outcomes. 
And as we focus on the kind of outcomes we want, we can work our way backwards and see what efforts we are putting into the things that we want in our lives. And I just want to reiterate that how important it is that we work on this thought cycle in our lives and how much it can improve every aspect of our lives. Thanks, Michelle. Last thing we wanted to finish up with is a quote from President Russell M. Nelson. He taught in this last general conference in April, quote, everything to do with becoming more like the Savior is difficult. For example, when God wanted to give the Ten Commandments to Moses, where did he tell Moses to go? Up on top of a mountain, on the top of Mount Sinai. So Moses had to walk all the way up to the top of that mountain to get the Ten Commandments. Now, Heavenly Father could have said, Moses, you start there, and I'll start here, and I'll meet you halfway. No, the Lord loves effort because effort brings rewards that can't come without it, end quote. And we'll talk more about that next week and about the spiritual side of our efforts. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate all of you. If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. If it resonates with you, the greatest compliment you could give is to share it with a friend who might benefit from it as well. Check out A Difference for One on Instagram for additional content. And if you have any questions, comments, a topic you'd like to hear about, or if you'd be interested in a free mini coaching session, send an email to a difference for one at gmail.com.